Good evening. My name is Chad Belville, and I'm the superintendent at Fairfield Union Local School District. And I welcome you to the 2020 State of Schools. I would like to begin this evening with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silent reflection. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As we begin this evening, I need to start with some thank yous. First, to our community, to the families and friends who have stepped up to help education continue, to support students, to donate, time, and materials. Thank you. Thank you for all of your support. Thank you for everything you've done to keep Fairfield Union moving forward. Two years ago, our district made a move to one-to-one -to -one technology through the generosity of our permanent improvement levy. Without this support from our community, education would not have happened as well as it has during this school closure. So, to our community, much of our success can directly be attributed to your generosity. To our Board of Education, thank you for your wisdom, your support, your guidance, and your leadership. Our Board of Education is the most supportive board in the state of Ohio, and it's not even close. We thank them for all they do for us and for always being there for Fairfield Union. I want to thank our students. No matter what hurdles have been in your way, no matter what obstacles you have faced, our students have risen to the occasion and have performed admirably. We thank you students for your continued hard work and for finishing the, the mission strong. Job well done. Finally, to our staff. Thank you for your long hours of work and dedication to our community and our students. From early morning Google Meets to late night Google Meets, where you were there for students academically and to help support them both socially and emotionally. Our staff would not only hold meetings with our students to talk about educational problems, but they would also meet with them to just talk. They would talk about anything and everything and sometimes nothing really at all. But those talks are key to supporting our students. Our staff has done amazing things, and not just educationally. The number of volunteer hours put in by our staff to ensure programs like our food distribu distribution program were successful have been immeasurable. Since March 13th, the Fairfield Union Local School District and its staff have handed out over 40,000 meals to our students and community. It's amazing to see this type of dedication, but I'm not at all surprised. We always say Fairfield Union is different, and this is just one of the many reasons why. Throughout the evening, you're going to hear our principals talk about many different things happening in their buildings, but an underlying theme that you will hear over and over is a concept that we believe and we preach at Fairfield Union. We want to focus on educating the whole child. It's not really that complicated, but we believe and we understand that unless you take care of the basic needs of every child, unless you support them, love them, and make them feel wanted, education will never happen. Along these lines, we are going to focus over the next year in creating mission and vision statements for our school district that reflect the values of our community and the characteristics we want our students to have as graduates of Fairfield Union Local School District. We have established a crest that I will unveil shortly that will help guide us, that will provide vision and meaning and purpose to what we want our students to be and what they can become. 
I would like to unveil at this time the crest for the Fairfield Union portrait of a graduate. You will see on the portrait of a graduate, there are five key components. At the top of our crest is the word community. This is the key to everything. Our community has shown how valuable a strong supportive community can be to a local school district. There isn't a finer community in Ohio than Fairfield Union, and we want our students to realize how important it is to be a part of that community. We want our students to attack life with courage, and we want them to do it in a caring manner. And those serve as pillars to help students along their journey to ultimately, when they get to Fairfield Union High School, they can focus on two things, a career path that will make them a valuable member of our community or a pathway to college where they can also realize their dreams. We are hopeful that our portrait of a graduate will serve as the template to guide us in the future. As we move forward, we will be working with our different community stakeholders, our parent-teacher organizations, our booster groups, and other parent meetings to help revise and shape our vision and mission statements to reflect the true portrait of a Fairfield Union graduate. I'm excited to bring my principals forward and hear the positive messages that they have to share with you. I'm excited to hear of the many great things that have occurred this year, and to honor those who have done the work during difficult times. It is with great pleasure at this time that I bring to the podium Mr. Matt McPhail, principal of Fairfield Union High School, to start our evening. Thank you, Mr. Belleville, and good evening, everyone. Before I start my presentation this evening, I'd like to just uh, acknowledge the loss that our students and staff in the district, but uh, especially here at the high school, have endured over the, the, the fourth quarter here. Clearly, the fourth quarter in any high school is a time of uh, many social activities. Uh, we had our, our spring musical scheduled. Uh, of course, testing falls in the spring part of the year. Our students taking AP courses, uh, their testing was impacted, and the list goes on and on. I just wanted to, to shout out to them. It's been, it's been um, amazing to watch the resiliency and, and the positive attitude that they've brought to the table to deal with these various disappointments and, and uh, would have been remiss if I didn't just mention that uh, before I got my presentation started this evening. Clearly the group most negatively impacted was um, our graduating seniors. This is a tremendous uh, group of students graduating this year. They've left a very strong legacy here in our district and at Fairfield Union High School in so, so many ways. Uh, clearly very unfair to them and, and um, unfortunate that they're not able to enjoy the traditional activities that seniors get to enjoy at the end of their senior year. But that doesn't change uh, the fact of there's the successes and, and the leadership that they've exhibited throughout their 13 years here in the district. Uh, just some statistics on our graduating seniors. We do have 139 students in this graduating class. 63% of those students will be attending a two or four year college. 43% of our graduates are earning a diploma of distinction and 32% are going to earn an honors diploma. 67 of our graduates, so roughly 50% of our graduates, have earned at least three college credit hours. Currently, as a group, they have acquired over $1 million in scholarship money and counting as we make final tabulations uh, heading into our graduation window here. We had four Kilberger Scholarship winners this year. Kilberger Scholarship uh, gives a student an opportunity to attend Ohio University tuition free. And we had a second in the last few years. We had a second Franklin B. Walter All Scholastic Award winner, which goes to the top senior in each county academically. Some highlights from this year. We, we have so many groups doing such good work in all aspects, our, our, um, our student groups, our student uh, government leadership groups, uh, key club, 
our athletic programs, and the list goes on and on. All do various uh, types of community outreach, charitable work, fundraising, blood drives, and the list does go on. You'll probably hear some uh, details about some of those programs. Uh, we collaborate, many of our, our programs collaborate with the elementary schools and the middle school in various ways, and uh, you may hear about some of that uh, in those presentations this evening. Just a few highlights um, that I wanted to, to mention uh, that I felt maybe uh, were, were unique. Uh, first and foremost, we had our first annual alumni band event this fall. We had over 300 graduates return to participate in that event, one from as far away as Alaska. It was a tremendous success, very exciting to see the excitement around that, that opportunity, and kind of humbling, to be honest, to see those band members entering the field. It was definitely a, a chill bump, goose bump kind of a moment, and uh, we look forward to, uh, to the second annual alumni band opportunity like to also recognize our FFA forestry team. They did finish, uh, they qualified for the nationals this year. It's the first time in school history and finished 12th place. We also had an individual state champion uh, with our FFA forestry team. The F FCCLA again had two students qualify for the nationals. Uh, this was a virtual format this year due to the COVID crisis. However, we do have two students that will be competing at the national level. Uh, Last year, we started a first annual Christmas shopping spree. This is a collaboration between our student council and the two elementary schools. Uh, this, is a, this is a very exciting opportunity for, um, for both our students and the students in the community as a whole uh, at the elementary school. We, we pair those students up. Um, students of need in the two elementaries are, are recognized, and then uh, we take them on a shopping spree, uh, excuse me, a shopping spree at Kohl's, and then they follow that up with a, a lunch at a local restaurant. So we had our second annual uh, Christmas shopping spree was, a, was mu very much a success. We continued again in our second year, the therapeutic art program between Forest Rose and our Art Three classes. That continues to be a growth opportunity, not only for the Forest Rose students who are residents of our district, but for our students who work, uh, who build lessons and develop lesson plans to work with those students when they come. They typically come one time a week and uh, we're excited about what that program uh, gives us as we move forward. I'd also like to uh, congratulate our athletic teams that uh, won uh, Mid-state leader league or district championships this year. We had um, mid-state league titles in girls cross country and boys basketball, and we had uh, district titles in girls cross country and girls soccer. You will hear a theme this evening about the whole child and social emotional growth. That certainly is a, a district initiative, and it's something that's very important to the work we're trying to do here at the high school. Really. Our approach over the last couple of years has been a pretty practical approach. We, we tell our students when they come to the high school that we want them to tailor their education while they're here so that they're positioned to have success at their next step, whatever that might be. So if they're going to go to a two or four year college and pursue a, a higher education degree that leads them into a, a career field, then we need to be able to offer the level of rigor necessary for them to get what they need and be prepared to be successful at that. If they plan to go to the military, we need to be able to, to have a, a process in place that they have the skills and the knowledge about uh, that transition that will allow them to be successful in that regard. Or if they just want to go into the workforce, probably the most relevant uh, aspect of what we do from the standpoint that in any given year, typically about 40% of our students go directly into the workforce in some way, shape, or form. And we feel like that um, there are some opportunities that we can uh, expose them to that will position them better to be able to go into a, a meaningful, productive level of work in our community. From the social emotional standpoint, we have uh, multiple things that we do. We offer a grief group that meets once a week uh, for students who have experienced loss in their lives. Uh, we work with Children's Hospital uh, on a suicide prevention program. This is a comprehensive program that we do plan to expand next year. Uh, typically, the last couple of years, we've uh, screened students at one grade level and worked with the families uh, at just one grade level. This coming year, we plan to work with students both the sophomore and senior level uh, staggered at different times of the year. That's been a, a very uh, fulfilling and I think important aspect of what we're trying to do here for our students uh, 
emotionally. Um, and then, of course, we do, uh, the, the district as a whole has a, has a, a comprehensive program, K through 12, uh, thriving learning communities to systematically give students the knowledge and the lessons that they need to be able to apply those skills, soft skills as we call them, uh, in ways that are going to help them uh, throughout their lives. And in our case, as, they as our students transition into the workforce or transition uh, to the next level to, to um, post-secondary education, those soft skills become critically important for their success. We do offer a peer tutoring program that, that has experienced um, very impressive growth over the last couple of years. Uh, we have uh, many students both providing the tutoring and many students who at any given time may have a need. It might be just for a short window of time. It could be for a more extended period of time. And we have students working with students with the oversight, oversight of Mrs. Ramsey, our freshman sophomore guidance counselor. She's done a tremendous job organizing and executing that program. Uh, we're excited about what that offers us moving forward. I spoke to you a little bit about rigor, and I'd like to speak to that briefly here. One of our objectives, one of our goals over the course of the next uh, two or three years is to be able to offer at least one college credit plus course in each of our core content areas and the business department. Currently, as we go into next year, we're planning to offer three of those courses uh, in our English department. We'll also be offering uh, College Credit Plus opportunities, multiple opportunities through our business department and the business pathway. And we're working um, in the beginning stages of having conversations with the University of Cincinnati uh, to address some goals that potentially could give us an opportunity to offer IT opportunities, CCP opportunities while our students are here, and also maybe a pathway to transition to um, a more comprehensive four-year program at the University of Cincinnati. We're in, uh, still in the, the planning stages of that, but that's very promising and we're excited about what that may hold. I mentioned our business pathway the last couple of years. We've been working to, to scale in to a full-scale business pathway for students who choose to take advantage of that. That does become operational this year, so the students who have been involved in that progress will have an opportunity to um, uh, acquire certifications that will, that will both give them college credit and also give them uh, opportunities to transition into programs at Columbus State. We, we are adding a Chemistry two course this year. We were concerned about uh, the implications maybe for our physics program, but we wanted to have more rigor at the top end of our science department, and that was based on their feedback and the feedback from our students. Uh, the response to that opportunity has been impressive, so we're excited about being able to offer that Chemistry two course this year. And then lastly, I mentioned the students being prepared for their next step, whatever that is. And for that 40% or so that are gonna transition into the workforce, um, we have a partnership with the Fairfield 33 Corridor Group, and, and this is a collaboration between our local business partners and leadership in our community throughout Fairfield County and each of the high schools here in Fairfield County. And of course, uh, we, we are a part of that as well. Uh, this gives us opportunities to provide internships and extended learning opportunities to our students in a variety of different ways out in the community so that they can see the real um, necessary job skills and soft skills that we talk about so often here to be successful in the workforce. As I wrap this up, I'd like to welcome, we just have two new staff members coming on board next year. So, you know, it's, um, we're, we're, we're pleased that we, we're able to have some continuity. We don't have a, a major transition in staff, but we do have two new staff members I'd like to welcome as we head into next year. Mr. Sean Krupla, We'll be teaching special education, and uh, Mr. Krupla is, will be our head football coach. And then Matt Gregory. Matt will replace Mrs. Ritten in our vocal music department. Uh, Matt is a graduate of Ohio State University. He comes to us highly recommended, was a member of the Ohio State Marching Band. It was, um, uh, he has a vast amount of knowledge and passion for music in general, and we're excited uh, for what he brings uh, to, the, to the table for us in that regard. Lastly, I'd like to give our staff a huge shout out here at Fairfield Union High School. We've had, um, it has been a tough fourth quarter and uh, so many challenges. And at every step of the way, our staff addressed those with a positive attitude, a can-do approach. They were problem solvers. And um, due to that, 
we believe we've had a very successful fourth quarter given the, the circumstances that we've all been dealing with. Distance learning is not easy, and we're fortunate that we um, have been blessed through the support of our community, our board, uh, to, uh, to be able to offer one-to-one -one, um, educational opportunities for our students. We use those every day, and that did serve us very well uh, in this uh, tough time here during the end of the school year. So with that, I'd like to introduce Mrs. Tricia Hahn, the principal at Fairfield Union Rushville Middle School. Good evening, I'm Tricia Hahn, principal at Rushville Middle School. Thank you, Mr. McPhail, for that introduction. I too am very thankful for our community, our staff and our students over the past two months of our closure during our COVID-19 closure. Uh, the support that the community and the staff have given our students has been amazing and I want to thank you very much for that. I'm going to start this evening by speaking about academics at Rushville Middle School. We offer a wide variety of classes catered to our students to meet the needs of all of our learners. We have advanced classes to cater to our gifted students. We have advanced math, and we also have our algebra class. And we also have classes that help students who um, have specific needs um, as far as um, content as math labs um, to help them with their interventions. Um, we offer a wide variety of electives for students to explore uh, their various interests that they may have. We have Spanish, world cultures, technology, finance and career exploration, just to mention a few. We also have an emphasis on our arts program, where our choir and band classes are offered to all fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students. We also have competitions that our students participate in throughout the year. We had our math counts competition this last year, where our seventh and eighth grade students participated in that. We also had a language arts competition, power of the pen, where seventh and eighth grade students as well participated in that. We have a reading competition called Battle of the Books. However, our students did not get to participate in that competition due to the school closure. But those students had read 14 novels during the school year in preparation for that competition. So we are hoping that perhaps this fall we'll be able to reschedule that competition. Another important thing that we did this last school year is our fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade teachers met with our high school teachers and our math council to align our math classes, collaborate with each other, and also determine math goals and resources for the upcoming year. A common theme of this evening is going to be our social emotional learning. And um, social emotional learning helps us to create a positive school, school culture that expands our student engagement, their learning, and their performance. We do use Thriving Learning Communities, which is a program that helps students recognize and apply their own unique character strengths and be the best version of themselves. This Thriving Learning Communities is implemented in our wellness class, which I will speak about in just a few minutes. We also have our positive behavior interventions and support system. We have tickets that are given daily to students who show their character strengths. We have weekly recognitions, and we also have a student of the month and a Falcon brunch to recognize our students who are continuously making good choices and being positive leaders in our school. I had spoken earlier about our wellness core. Our wellness core has health class, our wellness class, art, and phys ed. All four of these core classes in this wellness core are to help the student uh, develop themselves in all of these various uh, ways so that the whole child is being addressed every day. Every fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade student has this wellness core. Another thing that we did this past year was we had our students participate in our SOS program. We partnered with Nationwide Children's Hospital. Uh, they came and they trained our staff on student trauma, and then our staff was able to 
have classes for our students, which then identified mental health needs for our students so that we could offer resources and help to them not only at school, but also at home. I want to finally speak to you about our com community outreach uh, that we had with our students and staff this last year. We, had, we offered um, our Honor Society had our food drive where students helped restock community church pantries. Our Leo Club partnered with Nationwide Children's Hospital. Students made blankets for students, for patients, excuse me, and then took those blankets to the patients and also collected various supplies that they took to Ronald McDonald House. We also collected in the fall, we had a Socktober, which students collected socks that would help nearby shelters with, with collecting socks. Um, student Council provided funds for families at, during Christmas time. And then our last outreach was Pennies for Patients. Those funds were collected for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Societies. That's just, those just I just mentioned a few of the various things that we do at Rushville Middle School. Um, but we have an amazing staff, um, amazing students, and I just want to thank all of our students and our staff for uh, making Rushville Middle School the great, amazing place that it is. And now I would like to introduce Mrs. Dawn Rice, principal at Bremen Elementary. Thank you, Mrs. Hahn, for that greeting. My name is Dawn Rice, and I am the principal at Bremen Elementary. Now, more than ever, I am proud to be a part of the Fairfield Union Falcon family. This spring was unprecedented. Thank you to our families and staff for supporting their students during the school closure. There were a lot of amazing things accomplished by our students and staff alike. It was great to see everyone engaged and we were excited to continue to offer activities when we weren't able to be in the classroom together. Some of the things that we were able to do on our online digital environment included class meets, virtual field trips, scavenger hunts, school spirit days, weekly announcements, read alouds. We hosted an in-person parade. We were able to pro uh, host our Right to Read Week. We held a digital art show and we still held our fourth grade clap out. Before the closure and during the closure, we tried to focus on the whole child. Academic learning is important, but we know how important it is to meet all of our students' social emotional needs. We did this through three avenues. The first one was our Thriving Learning Communities curriculum. This starts at the elementary level. You heard our middle school principal and our high school principal speak about it. At the elementary school, we focus on those same 24 character strengths. We do that through daily announcements, daily class meetings, and a weekly character strength focus. The second way that we focus on our whole child is to engage our students with a community. We had our first project with our winter clothing drive where we engaged with one of the high school students who had an independent service project through the High School Honor Society. We held a food drive for the Bremen Food Pantry. We held a pet food drive for Meals on Wheels. And we took field trips to local agencies such as the post office and the fire department. And our classrooms e even held partnerships with some local agencies, such as Mrs. Neal's students that had a partnership with the Fairfield County Sheriff's Office. The final way that we focused on our whole child was with outreach from our staff and community to our students. We had a partnership with Bremen Bethel Presbyterian Church with our Breakfast to Go program. We had a partnership with the Fairfield Union Schools with the weekly food distribution program during the school closure. We had two partnerships with the Recovery Center where they offered drug and alcohol awareness classes, which is mandated curriculum, to all of our students. And then they also offered small group and independent counseling to our students. And last of all, we had a partnership with Fairfield Union High School. I have been particularly proud of how much this has grown over the last few years. We had a partnership with the Student Council where they took some of our students on a shopping trip at Christmas. We have the band and choir that come in and do annual performances for us. With the basketball team comes in and does readings with the students around Christmas time. And then most recently, we had the baseball team join our Right to Read Week offering students messages of encouragement. 
In speaking with parents over the last week, I have heard increasing concern over their child's readiness for next school year. I want to assure you, we got this. Families, you did a great job supporting your children this spring. Our staff is already looking forward and preparing for next year. They have been engaged in cross grade level meetings, discussing the curriculum covered this spring, and developing a list of areas to grow next year. Please take this time to take time this summer to relax and enjoy being a family and know that we are working hard behind the scenes to prepare for next year. Two additional initiatives that we have for next school year. We know how important it is to have a firm foundation for our students entering school. So we are adding a fourth kindergarten teacher to reduce our class sizes. And we know that literacy and math are the foundation for all other academic pursuits. In an effort to strengthen this foundation, we will be implement implementing a new literacy curriculum for next year. The program will feature a balanced approach with focus on phonemic awareness, phonics, fluence, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension. We are ready for next year. We appreciate all that you did to support our children this year, and we have your backs for next year. At this time, I'd like to invite Mr. Mike Myers to the podium. Good evening, and thank you, Mrs. Rice, for that kind introduction. Also, I'd like to give a thank you to Mr. Belleville and the Board of Education for hosting this event this evening. As you can see, our mission at the elementary schools is to teach the kids how to fly. And what we mean is that's where little falcons learn to fly. We take that as our mission statement at the elementary school, and you'll sort of hear a focus on that fact during the, the presentation this evening. I'd also like to give a thank you to all of the parents and caregivers and students uh, for all of your hard work, as well as the staff at Pleasantville Elementary. Times of trial and tribulation uh, determine our resolve, and you were very determined during this activity and during the shutdown, and you showed your falcon pride. When we talk about focusing on the whole child, uh, one of our first things is to focus on building community pride. And as has been talked about earlier in the presentation, uh, we have at Pleasant Valley Elementary done a lot of things to put our kids in a situation uh, where they can demonstrate pride in their community. And I listed a few of them there for you. For instance, our November food drive for the local food banks. Uh, instead of exchanging gifts at Christmas time, our students uh, collected food items for local agencies and also for military personnel overseas. We offer a jump rope for heart program for our students in support of the American Heart Association. Our fourth grade presented at the Fairfield Medical Center staff luncheon. They had their program and that's been a, uh, an activity that we have done periodically uh, throughout the years for, that, uh, for the Fairfield Medical Center. And then we also worked with Rise Realty to send letters to our troops. Also focusing on the whole child is building school pride. And again, I've listed some activities there for you. For instance, movie nights, our dances that we have with mom and dad, our donuts that we have with mom and dad, and our spring carnival. Unfortunately, some of those activities were not able to take place uh, due to the COVID-19 emergency. Uh, we also build school pride in, by catching our students doing things well and showing respect. We have our annual Marching Falcons concert, and this year we had the annual chorus tour, and that's 56 years of the chorus coming to the elementary schools, and that definitely is showing Falcon pride. And I'd also like to give a special thank you to the Pleasantville PTO for your role in hosting these events. Also focusing on the whole child, we want the kids to build their own character strengths. As has been mentioned, uh, we do have our social emotional learning program uh, where we work with our students on building their positive traits. And again, if students demonstrate respect, one of the things that they can do is help with announcements. Upcoming uh, for next year for the 2020-2021 school year, 
Uh, as Mrs. Rice mentioned, we are excited uh, to implement a new literacy program for students in K through 4. Also on the slide you can see that Mrs. Miller will be taking over as principal at Pleasantville Elementary. I will be retiring and so we are excited to have a familiar face uh, there at Pleasantville and I will put everybody's mind at ease that Mrs. Peters will still be at Pleasantville and we all know that Mrs. Peters runs the show. And probably the most monumental announcement of the evening the company that made the fluoride swish product that company now no longer makes the fluoride swish product and so students at Pleasantville Elementary and Bremen Elementary will not have to on every Wednesday swish fluoride that's a that's a big deal for elementary kids and it's not something that they look forward to also focusing on the whole child I mentioned earlier Falcon Pride I'd like to congratulate the seniors on your graduation and all that you've had to deal with uh, during this COVID-19 emergency. I'd like to give a special thank you and uh, congratulations to the senior salute me uh, members and recipients. And I, I couldn't get past this without telling a little bit of a story. Uh, as you meet the senior salute uh, recipients, uh, some of those young ladies were uh, Pleasantville Elementary students when they were in fourth grade. And one thing that I vividly remember is the boys in the fourth grade class coming up to me during recess and saying, Mr. Myers, the fourth grade girls keep chasing us and catching us. That's a testament to their athletic ability. And I will also add that that class is very strong academically. So I'm proud of not only the students at Fairfield Union Pleasantville Elementary, but also Fairfield Union Bremen Elementary for being a senior salute candidate and recipient. And as always, I'd like to say thank you for demonstrating Falcon Pride. And at this time, I'd like to turn the floor back over to Mr. Belleville, who will continue the program. Thank you to all of our principals for their presentations. As you can see, each of our buildings are in great shape and have worked hard over the past couple of months to continue education and prepare for the future. Job well done, principals. It is my privilege at this time to bring you some district initiatives that we would like to share with the community. Three years ago, we started an awards program called the Senior Salute. Each year we honor 10 graduating seniors who go through a rigorous application process. Their applications are reviewed by district office staff and scored on a rubric. At the end of the scoring, we take the top 10 scores and those are our senior salute honorees. The biggest piece of the application process is an essay on what Fairfield Union means to them. Reading these essays every year brings great pride to my heart and you quickly realize why students from Fairfield Union are different and special. And without further ado, I would like to unveil our 10 Senior Salute honorees for the class of 2020. Riley Elizabeth Barr, Katie Joe Burke, Tatum Lou Campbell, Bryn Lee Sisko, Regan Elizabeth Conrad, Morgan Mary Hartman, Lily Marie Moyer, Braden Williston Reed, Kaylee Nicole Sloan, Audrey Caroline. Strohmeyer. Congratulations to these 10 young ladies. Truly some of the best Fairfield Union has to offer. Each of our senior salute honorees will be given a medallion to wear at graduation and they are now one of 30 students to receive these medallions. Job well done. In addition to honoring the 10 senior salute winners at graduation, this year we have a special award for our senior salute. The family of Kevin Miller wanted to establish a scholarship in Kevin's name when he passed away in August. 
Kevin had a love of this district unlike anyone I've ever been around. He was a friend and a mentor to all of us, and his passion for Fairfield Union shone through every day. Kevin was always uh, somewhat kidded with or ridiculed somewhat uh, because he always said no anytime you came to him asking for money. And it became a long-running joke here, but deep down, Kevin's love of Fairfield Union was rooted in him protecting the district in every way possible. Many school districts across Ohio are struggling financially right now, but Kevin had the foresight to prepare our district for the worst of times, and we we're in good shape because of him. Ironically, as tight as Kevin was with money, the Miller family decided to establish a scholarship to honor one of our senior salute honorees. When Kevin passed away, the scholarship was established, and through the generosity of the Miller family and our community, this scholarship has well over $15,000 in donations. Sherry Miller and her children, Kara and Scott, read through our applications of the 10 winners, and they chose one winner this year who will receive a $2,000 scholarship. It is my honor to present the first ever Kevin Miller Memorial Scholarship to Tatum Lou Campbell. Congratulations, Tatum. Your essay and application moved the family greatly, and you are a worthy recipient of the first scholarship. Job well done. Earlier this evening, we were discussing the permanent improvement levy and how it helped the district move forward with a one-to-one -one technology initiative. Tonight, I'm excited to announce that we will be using the permanent improvement levy to also support our whole child education. At Fairfield Union, the arts have always been strong, and we've always recognized the importance of the arts in the education of the whole child. To further this along, beginning next year, over the life of the permanent improvement levy, as long as the funds are there, the district will be earmarking $10,000 to be dedicated to making improvements in the music department and in our auditorium. We believe these funds will only serve to help the music department and our arts continue to grow at Fairfield Union. Our final announcement tonight is a personal one, both for myself and our community. We could point to many individuals in Fairfield Union's history that are larger than life, but maybe there isn't one larger than Mr. Robert Trochia. Mr. Trochia has been a father figure, a mentor, a friend, and most definitely a teacher to all of us. There isn't a person in our community that probably doesn't have a story about Mr. Trochia and something he has done for them. Tonight, Mr. Trochia, it's time for us to say thank you. Thank you for always being there. Thank you for your support, your guidance, your leadership, and your love. Tonight, we want to show our love to you. On June 8th, at our Board of Education meeting, it will be my great honor to recommend our Board of Education pass a resolution renaming the auditorium at Fairfield Union High School the Robert Trochia Performing Arts Center. Congratulations, Mr. Trochia. This is an honor well-deserved and long overdue. We thank you for all you've done for us, and we hope that this will show you exactly how much you mean to us. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for joining us this evening. We wish you good health. And today, as with every other day, it is a great day to be a Falcon. Thank you.